Hello, welcome to Witness Rugby Chat. It's episode 18. I'm joined briefly in this episode by Drew Darbyshire. We'll run through what we're going to talk about. We're going to look at Bradford, the Bradford game. We're going to look at some of the contentious decisions in that game. Uh, we've got, we hear from Kieran Pirtle and Hep Kale who give their reaction to the Bradford game. And then I'll be back uh, a bit later in the show just to talk about a few of the other things going on around Witness at the moment. And then also look ahead to this Sunday's game away at Rochdale. Before we crack on, I must thank our sponsors, Musical All Sorts, PD Law, Arnold Gorse Financial Management and Deals Jewellers. Now we've got that out of the way, Drew, I've brought you on as an impartial, mm. you know, sort of observer. So, obviously everyone knows Witness, 25-20 win over Bradford at the weekend, but uh, a little bit of controversy over uh, a disallowed try for Bradford at the, at the very end, so... Um, witness for my money had dominated large parts of the game but just couldn't couldn't finish Bradford off um, and then we had an incident uh, witness got 25-14 in front Jack Owens has missed a touch line conversion which meant Bradford needed still could do it with two scores and uh, they got one of those and then with two minutes left Harrison Hansen slips surged through the middle Ryan Ince I think it was and, and a couple of other players got back completed a tackle three or four metres out it's passed right Minchella gets through, scores under the post, which would have won the game for Bradford, uh, and then referee speaks to his touch judge and chalks it off. I, <laughs> I don't want witness rubbish chat, but I don't think witness fans will uh, will like what I'm going to say here. Uh, I think it should have been a try for Bradford. I think the obstruction rule nowadays, in the, over the last couple of years especially, I think it's uh, an absolute farce. I think something needs to be sorted out because it, we see, especially in Super League games, when um, it goes, uh, a try goes to the big screen and it's the faintest of touches or the faintest of contacts and it's real obstruction. It's like, well, you, you, can't, you can't just physically disappear. You, you, mm. I, know, I, know, I know you go straight through, but you just can't keep running and running until you're, until you're in the next uh, territory or stand game. So I do think it should have stood, but Witness did deserve the win, didn't they, overall? And I think it would have been harsh on witness if Bradford would have got that try because obviously they dominated the game um, so I think it should have been a try though I think it, I think I it mean, definitely should have been a try I, mean, I it, think it Owens knew what he was doing wasn't he when he went to ground he, he knew that Bradford maybe could have got through it wide and yeah I mean I'm not, I'm not saying he dived but he certainly <coughs> made the most of it I mean I mean, yeah just to, to go back to your, to your first point I suppose is it would have been a tragedy if witness had lost that game because for me they managed it. They just, for whatever reason, they just couldn't get over the line. They controlled the game. I mean, Bradford started the majority of their sets. Um, oh, sorry, I should say, yeah, Witness started the majority of their sets on their own forty meters because that was as far as Bradford were getting. Um, but obviously, they broke through the middle. Now, there's the question of if he's offside because he, he is offside. Mm-hmm. But then I've seen a few people say, well, Bradford were offside for large parts of the match, and you know, so the offside thing. And even if he was offside, if he's blown offside, then. The try doesn't stand potentially. Now it's it's Fogging Johnston and um, and Crossley who are in the way. Now you can't dispute that they're not in the way. They are in the way, aren't they? But I suppose they can't disappear. Yeah, that that this this is it. This is this is why the obstruction rule in general, not just in the in the Witness Bradford game. This is why the obstruction rule in general needs to be looked at by by the RFL because too many tries are being denied. You get you get good try scoring efforts that are being denied by it. And you get players that... I wouldn't say cheating because it's, it's not cheating, it's just gamesmanship at the end of the day. Uh, but you get players doing gamesmanship and like Jack Owens with, with a dive. Yeah. dive. Well, I've, dive seen, I've it, seen a slow-mo where someone's saying... Someone's sort of suggesting that Foggin Johnston has stuck his leg out a little yeah. bit and that's what brought him down. But, I mean, it has to be said... It went it was very a, slowly. Yeah, though, it was it? a very desperate situation, yeah. it has to be said. And there was no there was no benefit to Bradford to obstruct him because they had men over, they yeah. could have scored. I mean, you might argue, well, without that, they had to score a wide route, which would have made the kick more difficult. But, mm. you know, it's... Uh, mm. And obviously, there's no benefit of there was no video ref and uh, and stuff like that. Well, it would have been interesting well, to see if, whether if it was video ref, I think it would have been ruled out. But that that's just my opinion. I think that any try or any effort that, that goes to the big screen, if there's that little bit of contact, it it seems mm. that the 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 tries are ruled out by by the video ref reason. And I'm not saying it's it's a referee's fault. If, if they're the rulings by by the RFL, they're the rulings. You've got to abide by the rules. But I think. It, 
the, the whole rule in itself needs to, to be looked at by the RFL and I don't think uh, the RFL did themselves any favours um, in, the, in the afternoon uh, on uh, yeah, Wednesday they yeah, when, they when, tweet, when, yeah. they, when they put out a tweet saying was it a try, was it not a try and, it, and I'm like they actually employ these referees well, so, mean, so what we're saying is we think the referee gave the correct decision by the letter of the law yeah. but that the law isn't yeah. right yeah. Is that what we're saying? So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll agree on that. We'll agree on that. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've seen a few, I mean, there's been a few irate Bradford fans kicking around, but then I noticed that Bradford were on the other side of a very contentious decision when they played Featherston. So is it that old cliche? I mean, I was on with Ben Hughes on the Championship and League One show earlier this week, and we've talked about the same thing. Is it a case of they just even themselves out over the season? Well, yeah, what goes around comes around, doesn't it? it yeah, look, in, in any sport, you're never going to get every single decision right. And I'm not saying referees are, are perfect. I'm not saying referees are to blame. Um, yeah, every decision is not going to go your way. 50-50 calls, they're not always going to go your way. Um, and that's the case for Bradford this week. Witness have got the rub of the green on this occasion. Uh, they got away with it. I personally don't think it should have stood, but uh, rules are rules, aren't they? At the end of the day, James, and you've got to abide by them. And the referees what have seen what they've seen, and uh, it's a try. It, well, it wasn't a try. It said it was a try in the paper, though. That's mm. all that matters. So why are you here, Drew? We'll ask you two more things. Gellin, gone home for two weeks um, to sort out visas or to see his family or, or whatever it is. Is there a concern that he might not return, or do you think that's just... I think I think there's always going to be a little bit of concern for Windows fans now regarding Anthony Gellin, uh, James, because there was all that... That commotion in the first place when he when he went over to, to Catalans had a training day with them though, uh, he's and he's now admitted that he he didn't know if he wanted to stay at Witness or not because he didn't know who he, who would be at the club. Uh, there's always going to be that worry now, especially with the situation financially that that the Vikings find themselves in. For me, I th- I think he'll return, but it's there was a thought in the back of my head: why is he going to be sure to out to a little kid in? And we all know Anthony Gallen's a good guy. We all, we all know he, he does things with his heart and, and he thinks with his heart. Um, but is, is that like a farewell kind of message? I don't, I don't know. I might be reading far too much into into it. I mean, he's really... He's it really bought, a farewell message, but... It would be um, a shame for Witness, obviously, it goes without saying, because obviously he's really bought into it. It's not like he's come over and sulked. He's, he's really, you know, he's helped put the club on the map and, and you know, and, and get the get the feeling up amongst the fans and stuff again so it's not as if he's he's hidden away from that so hopefully, hopefully he returns yeah hopefully um, because he, he's he's great to have in this country isn't he he makes everyone laugh with, with his social media presence he's, and he's an all round good guy as well we need players like that over here in, in this country playing rugby league but Maybe we should try and get him on as a columnist. No, we're trying to get Jackson Hastings on. You're trying to get oh, Jackson I'm Hastings trying, on the running. Maybe we should get Anthony yeah. Gellin could be the championship columnist. There you yeah. go. Uh, and then lastly, I've said this before. I think in a couple. Of, I think I said it. Like, did I say it last week? I can't remember when it was. Can we just make the top five? I think they can. <laughs> They're definitely not going to be bottom alley. It's going to be yeah. Swinton this time <laughs> next week, James. But uh, I, I think I think it's possible. Uh, Witness have turned it around, haven't they? They, had, they went through. A, a treacherous month where the club was really fearing for its life and uh, they, they have turned it around they've got some really promising youngsters I've met, I think I've been on the show a few times now and, I've, and I've, each time I've said I've been impressed with Keenan Brand uh, the centre who's, who's been playing on the wing they've got some great great youngsters with funny them. you say that actually about Brand because I was going to talk about his try on Sunday because there was a suspicion it could have been offside but having seen it all slowed down there's no way that any touch judge could have given that, I yeah. don't think, because it, it was very it was very tight. But yeah, certainly I think I think I, th- I, th- I think they can. If it, but but saying that, Lee Centurions have started the season very very strongly, haven't they? And they've obviously brought in some good additions in uh, Liam Hood from Witness and uh, Jake Emmett as well. And, and, and they get Lee away as well apparently as well. Well, there you go. And uh, so they're, they're recruiting very very well. Uh, Featherstone have started the season better than what I thought the the start of the season. I, I didn't rate the Rovers at all before before a ball was kicked this year. So they've started well, but Halifax are in a blip, aren't they? So mm-hmm. the, there's some teams swapping and changing. Sheffield have started the season I, well. I said this on Twitter though, it's better for witness the more competitive teams there are because what you want is you want York and Sheffield to be beating Featherstone and Halifax, mm-hmm. for instance, because it's, then it means... Yeah. You know, realistically, you're looking at the loss column, and you want 
as many teams to have as many losses as possible. Well, t- Toronto and Toledo are going to be top two, aren't they? Is that what you're going for? I'll go with them top two. And then there's three places to play for. Lee could be in with the show. Halifax, Widnes and Fev, isn't it? Is there any other? Yeah, well, I mean, you've got Bradford, else? York. Sheffield. York was starting well, weren't they? It's, it's, I mean, I think the point is, 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 is there's not going to be yeah, there's not going to be bottom. there's not going to be much yeah. to choose between yeah. the teams. I Witnesses think, three games against Lee may be pivotal because just, if they win all three of those, just look how close it was in the championship last year, James. By the end of the regular yeah. season, Lee missed out very narrowly by a point, and I think there was a point or two points separating sixth yeah. and third, second, yeah, second, uh, second. Yeah, so so it was very very tight. So. It's going to be interesting. The winners are going to have to win 95% of the games, aren't they, Nick, from now yeah. to the end of the season? Uh, I, I, think they could got, probably lose, I think they could probably lose three. That, that two or three, I They've still got to play Toronto, haven't they? They've oh, still got yeah. to play Toulouse. You've got the lead three times is the big one, I think. Yeah, the lead, um, the lead derbies are going, are going to be massive. So, it's yeah, you, 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 you've got to be winning them games, haven't you? Drew, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. You've heard what we think, so we're going to... Cut in now, Adrian Jackson has caught up with Kieran Pertil after the win over Bradford and also Captain Hep Kale. Kieran Pertil, those games go, a real test of character for the guys today. Yeah, it was um, a pretty game uh, for the purest of rugby leagues, you know, there weren't much uh, free flowing rugby, but we, we had to dig in there, we had to work hard, and um, sometimes when you're not playing well, you know, that's what you're relying on, and that's what we've had all year. So it was uh, it's a pleasing two points. Performance not great, but we'll, we'll take uh, an ugly win at the moment where we are. It's a great start though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and that's probably you know the, the start of the game's got, got us the two points. You know, the first ten minutes we were very dominant. We went 12 nil up, and uh, we, we probably relaxed and, and went away from the things that were working for us, which let Bradford into it. And then second half, it just turned into a, you know a scrappy fight, um, getting dragged down, and, you know, into little scraps and bushes everywhere. And we've got to be better than that. We've got to learn from it. But uh, we came through with, with two points, and I said before we're, we're happy to get the win. One to seventeen played the part, but it was a stand-up performer in the coach's eye. Um, I thought Ep was very good. Ep Kale was good, uh, you know, from the start. Um, JJ has been impressive for the last two games. You know, stepping up, playing 80 minutes is, is a fantastic effort. Um, but again, you know, I think they, they're probably the two consistents we've had have been Danny Craven and Jack Owens. They, they've been superb every game so far this year. Some, some well taken tries and uh, taken as well. Yeah, they were. Yeah, you know, within the probably the mess we had in the, the the ugliness, we did score some some nice tries, which is pleasing to see. And, and that's the true true witness. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back on the park and we'll get back to some. Some routine and some rhythm this week, and uh, fix a few things up, and look forward to next week's game against Rochdale. I was scared at the end, but thankfully the referee decided it wasn't a try. Yeah, the ref given no try, so we'll uh, we'll stick with that decision. Um, you know, and sometimes you you've got to have a bounce of a ball or luck go your way, and uh, you know, fortunately for us, the call went our way, and uh, and we've come away with two points. And other than the uh, Toronto uh, defeat, things seem to be going pretty smoothly on the field. Yeah, they are. Um, you know, it's championships are tough, tough competition. Um, there's some tough teams and some difficult teams to, to play against. You know, so it's not playing sailing, and you're not going to win every game by 40 points every week. Sometimes you have to roll your sleeves up and dig in and work hard, like we've done today, to come away with a win. Next up, Rochdale Hornets. That gives you the opportunity to get that elusive zero point. Yeah, it does. Uh, but you know, Rochdale are not going to um, roll over and let us go there and just just take two points. We we have to show them full respect. We have to work hard during the week, and we have to turn up with the right attitude and, and earn the win. And, and you know, that's what we're going to have to do every single week now. It's uh, it's almost like being in a final now every every week till the end of the end of the season. If we if we want to achieve what we want to try and do, which is a top five, which is still achievable, it's a, it's a long way off and a lot of hard work to get there, but um, you know, we've got to get to zero first and hopefully we'll do that next week. Is there any bumps and bruises to worry about ahead of the game? No, I don't think we've got too much. Uh, we'll, we'll have an assessment tomorrow and see see what comes through that, but you know, touch wood, uh, hopefully we've not got nothing serious. Hep Cahill, a real battle out there against the Bradford Bulls today, but got over the winning line. Oh, you know, we'll take the two. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but... Um, we're going to get there a lot this year. I think teams are going to come after us. And um, to know last week was a bit of a learning curve, and we thought we should be scoring points early. And this week we got caught in the dogfight. Uh, to know we we're happy we got the win, but there's a lot to build on. It's a big physical Bradford team out there though today. Yeah, some big boys in there. They run hard, and um, you know we spoke about it all week that that was going to happen. But you, you get caught up in that fight, and you know to be fair to them, um, they were unlucky and. Um, you know, it, was, it was a good game and we're, we're just happy to get the win. Got us to a quick fire start, so it must have been a bit of a shock for them to come back at you. 
No, not really. It's um, like we know, like I said earlier, um, we're training full time and teams are getting up to play against us and mm. um, we've, we've just got to adapt and, and hope, hopefully keep grinding out these wins. So, um, you know, we speak about it all week and we, we're expecting this to happen, but we can only get better from here. I was scared at the end. What was your thoughts on that one? Oh, to be honest, I wasn't. I didn't see what happened, but you know, we'll take the two points. Um, yeah. We're going to get some that go against us and some that we get. So um, we'll take that and um, we'll just look forward to next week now. All in all, though, on the pitch form-wise, it's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're um, we're in a big hole. Being at minus twelve, and um, you, you can see the determination from the boys pulling together and working mm. hard for each other and. You know, that's only on the back of what support we're getting from the community and from the town, and it's been amazing. And um, you know, it is a really big driver for for the team. You can see the massive crowds that we're getting, and that's all you can hear on the field. It's it's, it's good at the moment. So it is, uh, seems to be a, a, a togetherness about the whole club and the town. Yeah, you know, it's um, it hasn't just brought the rugby community. It's been the, the whole the whole town. It has brought them closer and. Um, it's the least we can do is try and put our hand up and give what everything we've got every week because they definitely gave us that. You mentioned the, the minus points that we're on. Now you're on to minus two. The, 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 the aim is to get to zero. You've got the opportunity next week against Rochdale. Yeah, it's going to be another tough one too. And I know we've been winning, but we can't take any any team for granted. And um, you know that that's the first goal we set after coming out of administration is mm-hmm. is to get get to zero and. Um, you know, we check that off next week if we get the win, and and then we can set new targets and move on from there. Top five, maybe. Oh, definitely. You know, mm. um, we play every game to win. So, um, you know, if if we keep working for each other, there's no reason why we we shouldn't lose any. Um, but you know, it's, we're not we're not taking anything for granted or any other team. We're just making sure that we we put our best performance on every week. For yourself personally, personally, how are you feeling? No, I feel good. You know, um, it's good to be back out there with the boys. Um, it's frustrating watching, but mm. um, especially the um, the hardship that we've been through and to see how how much it's mean to the town and to the boys. It's um, it's good good to be around at the moment. We've been lucky with the staff and definitely with Coach how mm. he's been a massive driving force for us. So um, the boys have rallied around each other and it's good to play with them at the moment. As a captain, you must be pleased, pleased at yourself to see all these young ones getting the opportunity as well. Yeah, do you know Keenan Brown and even Gilly Dinner at his 50th game today is big for the local boys and um, you know Jack's been massive for us. Uh, all these local kids that have come through the academy system are doing really well, so it's good to see. Thanks to Adrian Jackson for those interviews with Kieran Pertle and Hep Kale after the win over Bradford. Some really interesting points made by Kieran Pertle. Um, it was an ugly win, and, and in many ways, like, like I said earlier, it would have been a bit of a tragedy if Widnes had lost that game given the, the dominance that, that they had throughout the game. Um, it was a scrappy fight. Bradford, for me, I was a little bit disappointed with Bradford in terms of the lack of quality, but they certainly made up for that with the the guts that they showed really and they really dug in and, and made a game of it when you know perhaps in that opening spell where Witness got 12 and look you thought maybe Witness were going to roll them over um Hep Kale and, and and Jordan Johnston as well getting a mention from from Pertle as a stand-up form Johnston obviously having to step up and play the 80 minutes in the absence of of Liam Hood um or, or, or should I say since the departure of Liam Hood and of course the ongoing situation with Dom Speakman which we'll allude to in, in, a, in a little while um Danny Craven and Jack Owens, I don't, uh, you know, I, I think I said this on Sunday. I, if Craven carries on playing the way that he is, he could be a candidate for Championship Player of the Year. Um, and if Ryan Ince keeps scoring tries like his, he's going to be up there in terms of try scorer of the year. So um, that's good. I've mentioned it before, the top five a possibility, and I'm really pleased to hear Kieran Pertle say the same. Of course, they're looking at getting to zero points this week with a win at Rochdale. Um, but great to hear the coach saying that you know they're trying to be disciplined. They're trying. And that's their goal is to get the top five. And like I said, I've said before, 
it's certainly achievable. Um, you know, you're obviously banking on some clubs losing games, um, and and that's that's the point I've made previously. Is if 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 the seven or eight teams up there who are beating each other, it's going to be a lot easier for winners to catch up. And you know, you can already see a few of them teams have already lost four, three or four or five games already, and we're only six seven games into the season. So we've still another twenty games to go down the track. You'd like to think that. They're going to drop a few more. Obviously, it's dependent on Widnes winning the majority of their games, but I don't think we've seen anything so far that makes us think that Widnes can't do that. Um, we're still waiting to see Don Speakman and, and Lewis Johnson, who's on loan from Warrington. Um, I had a, I had some information last week, or I certainly queried what was happening, and, and neither of those players had been registered before, prior to the weekend because the RFL is still... Um, looking over or, or in talks or in negotiations or whatever the process is with the new witness board about the budgets um, and about the business plan. Uh, I've, I've, had, I've heard the word naive used a couple of times from speaking to a couple of people. Um, there's some unrealistic maybe figures in, in the budgets, but that being said, one positive from the discussion was that the attendance figures that had been predicted had been fairly modest, so of course We've had, we've averaged five and a half thousand over the last two games, so you know the more fans you get, obviously the more money there is in the budget. Of course, it's not the club's fault necessarily. Well, it's not full stop. You know they've not got the season ticket revenue, they've not got the sponsorship revenue. They're hampered by the fact that um, the sponsor pack sets have already been sold. I'd be really interested to know what the situation is with beat the scrum and, and and how that all fits in. Obviously, they're on. They've got a prime space on the front of the shirt. Is there a possibility that that could be? removed and resold you know I'm, I'm not sure there's the issue with the parachute payment and whether the super league clubs would uh, will release the final hundred and thirty thousand. you'd like to think that they would because witness have sort of got themselves sorted but then at the same time you know money's tight everywhere and they might be thinking well actually we could use that you know on, our, on ourselves um it sounds like uh, i was i was a bit worried that from my conversation that i had uh, last week friday that Witness may be forced to cut another couple of players to get in under this budget. Um, but, you know, we saw the statement from, from Jason Shaw last week who said that, you know, they don't, the Nova players will be leaving. And um, I think you've got to take his word for it on, on that. And, you know, I know Phil Finney said in a, in a feature with Aaron Bauer this week that they'll do their utmost to keep this current team together. So, um, fingers crossed it gets signed off because, you know, Witness desperately needs, certainly Speakman, I think. Um, to, to give Jordan Johnston a little bit of a, of a rest from time to time and be interested to see what happens with Lewis Johnson because he signed for a month um, which will be up after the Oldham game presumably he won't be able to play against Oldham because then he would be cup tied so if he doesn't play against Rochdale this week then you know there's every chance he could go without having played for witness which would be a strange one whether Warrington will agree to him staying for the rest of the season which I've, I've, I've heard a few murmurs around um, remains to be seen so um, all in all you know Winning on the pitch, you've got to always be positive when you're winning on the pitch and hopefully, you know, it's astounding really when you think we're less than two months into the season and witness of, you know, they've gone into administration, lost four players, had 12 points deducted and yet here we are potentially by the weekend will be on zero points. The new owners have, have rescued the club and, and are keeping it ticking over enough to keep the club ticking over, which is what it needs. It needs to survive for the rest of the season and then see where we're at. Um, so fingers crossed everything can, can get sorted. That's it from this week on Witness Rugby Chat. Please do um, write in if you've got any comments or suggestions. Don't forget the new phone-in number is now live as well. I'll put the number in the comments because I forgot it off the top of my head. Um, we had a few from last week that have not been able to get in the show in time for this week, but certainly had a few from next week's away game at Rochdale if possible. Thanks to our sponsors, Musical All Sorts, PD Law, Arnold Gorse Financial Management and Deals the Jewelers and I'll see you next week.